Hello. Hi. Lorna, can I hire you as my hype man? OK, awesome. Um, I, I wanted to thank Miles and Mimi um, for being the heart of this festival and bringing us together January after January. It is such an honor to stand here in the same place that so many of the people who have taught me and inspired me have read. Um, so thank you. And thank you to Susan and Jennifer for making this all happen. Yeah. Um, and as I'm going to tell my workshop, never apologize for your poems, and now I'm going to apologize. So <laughs> here's why. I need you to take a moment, center yourself, think of middle school. Mm, yes, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but if it makes you feel better, I need you to imagine me in middle school. Uh, Mid-90s, Central Florida, about three hours north of here a very dark time for fashion. Uh, <laughs> in style at the time was the mall bang. Does anyone know? OK, let me explain. I had bangs. And then you would use about half a can of hairspray. I'm so sorry for my contribution <laughs> to climate change, Nicole. I apologize. Um, but you would, you would take your bangs, and you would shellac them into a wave, like a standing wave on your forehead. As Lorna said, I run, I am a sweaty individual. By the end of the day, it would kind of collapse into like a forehead toupee. Yeah, uh, and that's right when hormones kicked in. So th thanks, body. Uh, sex suddenly everywhere. In shop class, that redhead with the jumpsuit zippered from throat to crotch, trilling Boys, don't touch my zipper until they trailed her like goslings, transfixed by the shiny metal pull. The couple caught naked in the science building bathroom. Backhand whispers of, but I wouldn't even take my shoes off in there. And how many eighth grade dance parties in a country club boathouse, some girl in the corner crying about some boy, some boy nervously plucking the wails of his corduroys, waves lapping, unheard but always lapping, as I got freaked by the pagan twins to a boys to men slow jam. Confused girl meshed between two confused brothers. I tried not to stare at the girls I wished against me instead. And every day, those hallways, crowded cattle chutes, must up clusters of young bodies, slap of sandals, snap of bra straps, high sweet stench of Malbot perfume. My nose to the back of another girl's neck, close enough to see a single strand escaped, curling beneath her collar, the gym class dampness between her shoulder blades. Sometimes it was all I could do to keep my clothes on, to keep from moaning aloud, once a bucket, an occasional embarrassing slosh over the top if jostled, now a sieve, desire leaking from every pore. Which is why I tried so hard to be harder, to use the world as my whetstone, sharpening myself against each day. My body cried out for armor. Big-boned, broad-shouldered, I was built for it. Forced into a dress with shoulder pads, I was the 90s littlest linebacker. So I began to run, clanking like a tank around cul-de-sacs. Began to climb, building biceps strong enough to stiff arm the world away. Even my heart grew heavy. Grew into one more thing to carry. But I graduated, 
and I'm here. Um, and even better than that, um, I met the fabulous woman who read before me, and I fell in love. And even better than that, she loved me back, uh, which absolutely seems like something worth celebrating. And as I was thinking about what, what do you celebrate with an ode, I was like, my wife's got good hair. It's pretty phenomenal. So, I mean, wood rat or not, I mean, it was, it's great. So um, this poem has an epigraph from Pablo Neruda. Other lovers want to live with particular eyes. I only want to be your stylist. <laughs> Curly, my tangler. Who needs Rumpelstiltskin when such treasure abounds? Her gold woven around my bike gears, tangled in my toothbrush, vining every drain. Even sometimes found in my mouth, upon waking. And just this morning, from the bathroom, she called me in. My mama's the only one who ever brushed out my hair, she said. But you are my wife. You should know. I began at the bottom, her curls separating with the thick sound of good cloth tearing. Do you see why I had no friends when I was little, she asked. Mama brushed out my hair each day before school. I eased my fingers for the first time all the way through, asked how that felt for her. Vulnerable, she said. Shimmering out beneath the overhead lights, a climbing of kudzu, a symphony of trumpet vines. Her hair revealed itself. It was like Velcro, she said. Anything would stick in it, bubble gum, spit wads, pencils. I'd come home crying, and Mama would hold my ugly, frizzy head and say, baby, they're just jealous, as though her love could make the lie so. When it comes to her, her mother and I have this kind of love in common. Only now the lie has come to pass. My wife, whose hair is the shade of farm fresh yolks, the color of things rich on the tongue, whose hair sings the plaintive song of bed springs, whose hair is the drifting smoke from a village of chimneys, corkscrews enough for a thousand bottles of wine. A ski slope of S-curves, a grove of twirling maple keys, every playground slide worth sliding. Before a rapt audience, a company of ballerinas cambers their hands to trace out in the air your hair, my dear Angora goat, my cloud of bats spiraling from the cave. <laughs> Thank you. As a poet, you can spend a whole afternoon on the couch thinking about twirly things. It's delightful. Um, so, sadly, marriage is not all wonderful hair and odes. Uh, and one of the things that I was really surprised by um, when, when we got married was, and I'm sure this is just me, you all don't do this, um, I figured out that I like to tell myself stories in which I am amazing. <laughs> it, it's just me, okay, good. Um, yeah, so, superhero, I'm incredible. But suddenly, when you spend time with another human every single day, it's very clear you fall short a little bit of that. So... A question to ask once the honeymoon is over. Big around as my bike helmet and high as my ankle, the box turtle was halfway from my side of the road to the other. The warm sun felt delicious, my legs strong, and it was almost to the center line. I hadn't been passed by a car for miles, figuring if it was still there, I'd pick it up on the way back. I cycled past. Years before, the woman across the street was shaped like that turtle, 
or more like a toadstool, really, squat bell of a body atop the thin stalks of her legs, milky and bare beneath her frayed black house dress. It hurt her to move, clear even from my second story window. So she brought her trash out in increments, in small, bursting grocery bags. She tossed each out the door onto the porch, then nudged them one step to the next before easing carefully, painfully herself down, a step at a time. Then she towed them finally, slowly, slowly into a crumpled heap at the curb. I left my window to help, then took her trash out every week after. That story. I hadn't yet told it to my wife. Had I? But there was the turnaround quicker than expected, and I, fun, I, I spun to find a beat-down bus trailed by all the fuming cars that hadn't passed me. Steadying my handlebars against the wind, I rode back hard, dodging around crushed squirrels and tire-splayed birds. The turtle was just where I'd left it but with the top of its shell torn away. The dead turtle, a raw red bull, its blood slashing the twinned yellow lines into an unequal sign. As in, A is unequal to B. As in, thinking about doing the right thing is not the same as doing it. As in, how many times did I watch that old woman shuffle bags down the stairs? Really, how many? Before I went from watching to helping. As in, with my wife beside me, I am the woman who does not hesitate to lay down her bike and give a small life safe passage. As in, I bike slowly home, told no one. As in, will she love me less when she learns I am not equal to the person I am when she is watching? In the first fall of our marriage, though I want to give you only kindness. There's often an age between what I want and who I am. Yet how many times can you cry on my chest before something good grows there? Redwoods thrive in acid soil. Summon that weight. Those stiff-fingered roots to skewer my ribs and prime the rusted pump in my chest. Into that age, let me grow. A ring for each year, marking boom and drought and flood. Let me anchor further into your roots. Make me part of something greater. Let me grow strong enough that even when fallen, I can be of use to you. Rough lumber for rafters and joists, a roof for the drum of this evening's insistent rain. A cross-section from my trunk set to spin on the phonograph. A record of what has passed, playing the music of what is to come. A song for each year, I'll learn to love you better. Thank you. All right, and we'll, we'll go up from here, so you want to talk to me afterwards. Um, so we, we somehow managed to make it almost seven years, is that right? Yeah. So on a recent anniversary, uh, we were on a beach, it was sunset, it was beautiful, and she looked over at me, and Nicole said, you've gotten so much softer. Right, so nice, except... <laughs> I'm a jerk and you can't take compliments. And I said, well, yeah, if you take two really hard things and you hit them together long enough, 
they get softer. That happened. Um, she didn't think that was funny. <laughs> so I wrote a poem as an apology. Um, you can ask her if it worked. The first rule of rock tumbling is rocks must be of similar hardness. Naked on the front porch, the moon unfurling its light as though for a picnic. Our yard is silver and set for feasting. When we married, I was all elbows and angles with one pace, which was my pace, which was fast forward. She was all cushion and curve, considerable sharpness shivved inside a pillow, deliberate thinker, decision, circler, all around slow goer. Despite this, we loved hard enough to want the other always at our side. So where others reminisce of their early honeymoon years, ours were more rock tumbler, more slurry and coarse grind. Two roughs bashing together until our edges wore, not, not smooth exactly, but worn into each other, gear tight, Cog in cog, turning our shared hours. Like this hour, on this night, when I stand between the moon and her, so she wears the light like an unzipped jumpsuit, shoulders plated, outer thighs striped bright. At her center, my shadow, that tailor-made eclipse, a darkness exactly my size though we could easily change places and have and will. She steps, sides lit, I step, backlit to match our shaded places. And only once we're fit like this, dark to dark, are we once more bound by the light we each carry. Thank you. So uh, if you decide to come visit us in Asheville, which I highly recommend, it's lovely there, um, one of the special features is because we're at a relatively low elevation, when you get above the tree line, instead of hitting snowpack, you hit the most beautiful grassy field that you've ever seen. And this is called a bald. And somehow you hike up to a bald, and there are always puppies gallivanting and babies laughing, and it's, it's glorious. Uh, and Nicole informed me when we first got together that she had no, never, ever flown a kite. So, yeah, the first present to her seemed clear. Because you waited for me to fly your first kite. Let our love be this clutch of dogs off-leash. The preen and posture, snort and snuffle, of saying, I smell you, and therefore know you. The rolling on the backs and bearing of the bellies and the tails, an exaltation of metronomes, keeping time for their joy. If this summer is a body, let me be its tongue, Tasting the green tang of the spittle bug nests, foaming the oak grass, the iron of this good dirt. A tongue to lick the salt from your upper lip, the rosary of sweat risen on your chest. A tongue to tap the top teeth and suck back like a wave whose tide rolls out through lips pursed as though for a kiss. Listen again. Thank you. As in, thank you, please, let me be this kite lifting from your hands. Ruffled nylon paradise bird with its taut spine and crossbar, the pop of its ripstop sails, snap of its translucent tails. Give me the grand view, white water and mountains, but mostly of you. Head thrown back, face to the sun, holding my trace line. Tethered to you always, responding to the slightest tick of your fingertips. Let me be a kite that trusts itself to the sky. Yes, 
Gravity is inevitable as death. But why let that desecrate even a moment of this flight? Thank you. <laughs>